All right, yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and today I'm doing something exciting. I'm doing my first ever loot from one hour of an entire route, as opposed to loot from one hour of one specific Pokemon. Now, people have been commenting this incredible feedback for a while, and it's a really good suggestion. Usually in PokeMo, the way you make money, or a really good way to make money, is by catching tons of Pokemon and selling the IVs. There's around a one out of five to around a one out of six chance that every Pokemon you catch has a one times 31 IV, which go for decent value on the GT due to the breeding system you guys know the drill yada yada now generally when you're trying to catch pokemon to make money you're catching almost every pokemon you run into sometimes it is more profitable to run away from pokemon and catch more specific pokemon within that route but you usually want to be catching at least multiple different types during my loop for one hour series i usually only catch one specific species of pokemon however a more realistic representation of how much money you'll actually be making if you want to farm for pokey and efficiently is by farming an entire route so that is what i will be doing today i'll be here at route 14 in unova kind of an interesting one there's a lot of weird pokemon here things like altaria things like like Mian Shao, things like Gold Duck, Jigglypuff, which is actually really surprisingly good money. Um, there's tons of interesting stuff here. Behem and Drifblim. Drifblim is a really important one to mention because one of the things you require for this route so going to move into the requirements for this method is a damp Pokemon just in case you encounter that shiny Drift Bloom in case it has self-destruct or explosion. So definitely bring a Parasect. Uh, you might want to have a Master Ball in the back in case it has Destiny Bond and stuff as well. You try to try to catch it before that, but uh, definitely be aware of it. The Drift Bloom can have Destiny Bond and Explosion, an absolutely nasty combo. Uh, make sure you have your catching Pokemon and your Breloom, of course. Breloom is going to get kind of beat up by the Altaria here or other flying I think Tropius might also be here other flying type Pokemon um, I'm gonna be popping lures as well I'm gonna make sure to go buy more lures before I actually start my hour but I'm really curious to see how this goes I have a box empty all of my Pokemon I catch will go to that box uh, I'll be using pretty much just pure Pokeballs for the entire time just false wipe and sporing it should be pretty low cost to farm at this spot uh, except for the lore cost so I'm gonna go pick up more lures and just go ahead and get started now, if you don't know, the location for Route 14 is just to the east, northeast of Black City. So you can essentially fly to Black City, head northeast, and it's pretty close to a PC. Now, I'm starting this with 20 lures, and I am actually going to be farming in this dark grass location specifically this is going to give me a lot of double battles which will make things kind of complicated slash a little weird possibly at some points for certain catches but it's going to give me a lot more encounters a lot more double encounters hopefully better pokemon etc etc i like using dark grass whenever possible so it's kind of a little strange for catching but as long as you're efficient enough it can be pretty good i'm excited to see how much profit we'll end up with hopefully you guys are as well and i'll see you guys after the hour let's go ahead and get started all right, now I do think the one Pokemon I actually will be actively avoiding catching is Drifblim. The only reason being is that it's actually, I'm going to avoid catching this Tropius as well since it's a grass type, but the, only, the main reason being is that um, it's a ghost type. So I can't actually false swipe it without having some sort of soak false swipe combination. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and just catch this Mianxiao here. Mianxiao is actually a really good Pokemon to catch because it has a pretty high demand in the OU tier. It's a pretty good Pokemon. I'm going to go ahead and spore. Let the let that come through. Uh, let's go to the PvP statistics and actually show you guys. Uh, statistics. Let's see how far I've destroyed them before we find Mianxiao. Yeah, 12% usage. Uh, it's a really interesting regenerator uh, life orb Pokemon. Pokemon, which is really awesome with U-Turn, which is Regenerator U-Turn is pretty powerful. So I'm going to go ahead and try to catch this thing uh, and see how it goes. Okay, nine minutes into this after getting Parish Songed by an Altaria forever, which was a huge pain. I have to admit the Dark Grass is atrocious. This is unbelievably not worth it. I'm going to switch away from the Dark Grass immediately. I'm going to go heal up, come back to this location, uh, and try the normal grass. I might even restart my encounter counter and just restart everything from scratch because this was atrocious. Uh, it was super, super, super not good and not worth. Um, and I'm just going to reset. I want to give you guys an actual like, good piece of content, an actual good test. So you know what? We're going to restart things. All right, I apologize for wasting your guys' time. We're going to start here again at 20 lures. Once again, I do have like 40 extra steps, but I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm going to start the timer. I'll see you guys after this one hour outside of the dark grass, normal grass location now. All right, there we go. That is the last catch of the hour. And honestly, I mean, that's wow. That's actually really, really good. So Mark 10 has one times 31 more. That was actually a great catch. Um, I don't know how I feel about this one. Uh, feelings wise, after the hour, it didn't feel super good, but I think I could also see myself being surprised. But I didn't love that farming location. I'm going to be totally honest, but maybe I'm just super incorrect. I hope that's the case. Everything we caught is here in box three. So I'm going to sort through this and I'll see you guys in a quick sec. 
All right, here's the breakdown of what we caught from the loop for one hour of Route 14 in Unova. We ended up catching, I believe, what is this, six Mianfu? Uh, six Mianfu, which is a pretty powerful Pokemon. Mian Xiao is a pretty useful Pokemon in the OU tier. Uh, Ten Jigglypuffs and Woodley Tufts. And then around 14, 15? 15 Gold Ducks, I believe. 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 15 Gold Ducks. And then eight behemoths uh, all of these Pokemon are in pretty interesting egg groups i'm excited to go ahead and price them out i'm going to go ahead and sort them by one times 31s noted etc and then i'll show, you, I'll show myself releasing all of the useless ones so we caught 39 pokemon in total and all of these are the ones that we are actually going to be keeping these are all the ones that have one times 31 ivs however i want to double check to make sure any of these like just male egg group pokemon don't have any base prices uh, i don't think this will i also found out i thought behem was in the chaos egg group but it's actually humanoid not a very humanoid looking guy to me but honestly i guess it has two arms and a head so i, I don't know close enough i guess but i don't think anything else is going to have any base price certain male egg group pokemon can have certain base prices because people need some shiny hunts a really good example is jigglypuff uh the fact that jigglypuff is in the Fairy egg group means that any single male Jigglypuff or Wigglytuff is going to be worth usually at least 3k. People need them to shiny hunt Chansey, for example, which is, I can show you guys, uh, fairy, male, excuse me, male, sort by lowest price, usually going to be around 3k. Yeah, there's one for under the price, but everything else is 3k plus. Uh, people need, you know, 30,000 male fairy egg group Pokemon to breed for shiny Chansey since it's a female only species. However, all the male Jigglypuffs and stuff we caught just so happened to have IVs anyway, so no extras to even worry about. Let's just go ahead and drag and select all of these, release them all, bam, there we go. Okay, now it's time to start pricing. These two Pokemon right here are going to have like the lowest prices. They're pretty much just going to be one times 31. They have no other stats going on. So I'm going to go ahead and do, I believe this guy is Water A and Field. Those are the two egg groups I'm going to check. None of these Pokemon are, are like particularly interesting species besides maybe this Mianfu. Like maybe I'll price check this Mianfu as a Mianfu. Um, but even then, I kind of doubt it. Let's do Gender Male, Water A, 31 HP. Let's check the Field group so that was 4600 4800 yeah stuff's a little cheap right now honestly i'm kind of surprised at how cheap this is um i feel pretty comfortable listening for 5k though let's go ahead and get up our windows calculator our most important tool on this channel so this gold duck is going to list it for 5k and i'm going to add that to our calculator our calculator is going to keep track of our base uh revenue incoming so far we'll, tr we'll subtract some costs later to sort of get our total profit Next up is this super simple Jigglypuff, 3,500 Poke and just a super quick listing. Gonna go ahead and do that. All right, those should be our two simplest listings. Now we have 10 Pokemon left that I want to I want to price a little more specifically. Let's go ahead and do this Mianfu since this is like the one that maybe I'll price differently or price as a species Pokemon. I'm going to try this though. I don't know if it'll give me a super accurate price. Let's see if we can find anything on the GTL Mianfu. Someone has one for about 10K. It's pretty accurate. This has 25 plus attack though as well. This might be pretty decent. I don't mind doing that. What if we just what if we just get rid of the uh Special Defense and just look for the 31 HP. Yeah, like 5,600. People do want Mianfu. What if we do 25 plus here? Yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to try to... Oof, do I really want to try to list this for 10K? Is it really, really worth it? Um, part of me wants to try... Look, this one has infinitely better stats for 13K. I, I don't think 10K is worth it. I think I'm going to go ahead and just list this. It might sell kind of quickly. This one's kind of underpriced. I could kind of yoink this up and relist it, but it's only like 1, 2K profit. There's a fair bit of stuff underlisted here. I, I'm just going to go ahead and price mine at 6498. I think that's a super fair price out of the ones that are there. I'll go ahead and sell that off like that. Just 31 HP is really the main thing there. Someone could get the 30 special defense essentially as a bit of a bonus. But we're going to add 6500 over onto the calculator. Once again, we'll subtract listing fees later on. Moving on to the next Mianfu. While we're looking at Mianfus. Looks like someone farmed a bunch of Mianfus recently. This is not me searching for Mianfu. This is me searching for humanoid male with 31 special defense. It seems like someone or some some group of people have been farming Mianfu. That's kind of an interesting proposition. Maybe I'll have to check that as a money-making method here in the future. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions for Loop from One Hours. It's always nice to see what you guys want to see. I have tons of ideas, but pumping out the ideas that you guys actually want to see is obviously more beneficial. I'm going to list this for 5K. Pretty, pretty easy listing. Add that over on the calculator as well. 5K. 
All right, we're only at 20k so far, and you know what? I don't like that number. That's too small. Let's go ahead and bump it up. Let's sell this awesome gold duck. This is water A and field, right? This thing has some really awesome stats. I'm really curious to see what this will go for. Let's check it out. The cheapest in the water aid group is 20k, but it's also something that's been listed for 13 days, which is brutal. Let's check the field aid group. Uh, 11k is the cheapest. Once again, not the crazy money, but it's something. It's at least something. Uh, I think 11k is honestly going to be my best pricing. Man, that's kind of brutal. Maybe I should go for a little higher water A, because the reason why water A is the better aid group here is because I believe Dratini. Uh, there are things like Dratini. There's things like uh, Melodic, as you can see. There are some more interesting Pokemon in water A that are actually more beneficial to have these stats. But there's Pokemon with these stats, but also 25 plus in like attack and stuff. Are you kidding me? Being listed as breeders. Like that is... That is brutal, man. How do I supposed to keep up with things like this polywag? Let's list it for 13 days as well. This is a fantastic, fantastic breeder. That's crazy. Okay. Um, wow. Let me try ahead. Uh, I'm sure to go ahead and list this for like 15k, I guess. Maybe 12k. Maybe let's do 15k. Let's do 14999 like that. We'll try it. Next up, we have this gold duck with 31 speed and then 25 plus and special attack and special defense. Looking like a clean. 5k or so what if we get rid of these and just see the 31 speed price man whew, that's kind of brutal uh, i'm gonna go at least 5500 i guess then 31 speed should be a really nice stat i'm gonna go 5500 on it our next gold duck is this one which is 31 attack and this is probably gonna go for around 5k let's check the field aid group really quick though yeah this is an easy 5k listing and then we have our last Golduck. Uh, we have a Spinda that's comparable. This thing is 31 attack and 25 plus and many other stats. Plus that 19. That 19 like defense starts to become relevant. Uh, Poliwag is 9k. This is pretty comparable. I'm going to go 8k on it and see how that sells. And that was our last Golduck. So now let's go ahead and move on to the Behemoths. And we'll do the, the Jigglypuff and the Wigglytuff after. At least we had a Golduck sell during the making of the video. That's something at least. This is actually so tragically sad because I really, really thought this thing was in the Chaos Aid group. And if this thing was in the Chaos Aid group, this would have been crazy money. But the fact that it's in the, the Humanoid Aid group, it's not even that good. I can show you guys. So like here, I'm going to try to sell this for like 20K. This has been listed for seven days and it's just not selling. Uh, I'm going to try to go like 20, maybe even 15K on it. Let's switch this to the Chaos Aid group and show you guys how much this could have been worth. Like 30K, 40K, like easily. I think easily this thing could have gone for like 35K for sure or around this price. I think this is now going to go for like half that price at like 15, 20K. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's gonna be not that great. I'm gonna try 20k, I guess, but that might take a bit to sell. Not gonna lie. We'll go for it though. And then this Behem should go for around 6,500. I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. It's definitely not a bad price. It's 499 as always. And that just put our expected profit at a clean 80k, which I mean, looks kind of nice at least. And then it looks like this Jigglypuff is only gonna sell for like 4k. Man, the fairy, aside from the base price, the fairy aid group has an incredible base price being 3k or even like 3300 or whatever. But other than that, IVs sell terribly in this aid group. I wonder if there's tons of room for like profit to be made. So I feel like. I feel like you could probably buy some of these and make some really nice breeds. I think breeding is the way to make money nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. These have been listed for very few time, I guess. I might try to list this for like 5k or like, you know what? I'm going to go 7k on it, weirdly enough. I think it's just a fair price and I think over time it will sell. Over time being like one or two days, I don't think it'll actually take that long. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last Pokemon to sell. And as you guys can tell, our expected profit so far is 87k. And that's not even including the costs of listing fees and the couple expert lures we used. Thankfully, we didn't have to use that many expert lures, but this is not going to be a great money making method. Not at all. Yeah, I'm going to end up listing this Widley stuff for... Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of these and see what it tells me. Yeah, like 4K. That is actually pathetic. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. We're going to go ahead and sell this for around 4K, leaving us at around 91K expected revenue. And that's atrocious. That's not even after the listing fees and everything. Now, I will say something I haven't mentioned about this location is that this location in game is actually one of the best shiny hunting locations for Tropius. So if you want to do this location to hunt Tropius and kind of catch Pokemon along the way, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do that. I wouldn't recommend it. Once again, I'd probably just hunt Tropius at a different location. I've actually been hunting Tropius at uh, this spot in Hoenn. I believe it's Route 119 or Route 20. I don't remember which one, but one of these routes, uh, it also has Marsh Stomp. 
which is awesome. And then it also has Absol. So there's like, there's a route that has like, yeah, it's route 120 uh, and Kecleon, like many, many, many rare shinies, which is awesome. Uh, basically the best spot you'll see for Tropia, shiny Tropius is usually an uncommon location in the wild. So at least our stuff is selling pretty fast. That's honestly kind of nice, but 91K. And then we ended up using uh, four expert lores, which that's, that's minus 6K. I mean, right there. And then we listed at least 12 Pokemon. It's like minus like 12 to 15K. We'll just do minus 15K to be safe about it for the listing fees. It's like 70K profit after an hour. That's atrocious. That's like close to half the money or like, you know, a little more than that. Uh, than the money you're going to make doing like just payday, which is super brain dead. Um, that's like a third, less than a third, like a fifth of a gym rerun. That's just terrible. But you know what? It's all about testing and trials within Pokemon. I'm happy to have at least tested it. And it's a cool location and I've been curious about it for a long time. So hopefully this video was at least helpful or entertaining to some extent. Maybe it was mildly entertaining background content. While you guys are making some Pokemon, while you guys are farming, while you guys are catching Chinese, etc, etc. Hopefully you're having a great day. Thanks for watching till the very end. I do really, really appreciate it. Like this video if you did enjoy it. It means the world. Subscribe to the channel for daily Pokemon content. Follow the Twitch for streams Monday through Thursday at 12 p.m. ET for Shiny Hunts. I'm going to be doing Tropius and stuff. At least least at the time of recording that might not be changed by the time this comes out uh discord link is down below if you're interested in updates on all my content and if you want to go above and beyond and support the channel youtube memberships twitch primes twitch subs etc all do help out a ton have a great day i'll see you guys i'll see you guys later peace Hey, thanks so much for watching the entire video. I really appreciate that. And if your name is on this list, I appreciate you even more. Thank you to everyone who goes above and beyond and supports my channel and allows me to make content full time. I couldn't do without you guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day.